What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about if we're going to get a Watch Dogs 4. Now, let me explain firstly. You know, oftentimes, a lot of people that watch these videos aren't subscribed, so you may not know my history. I'm not... I don't think I'm clinically insane. I am one that tends to look to the future. I have Watch Dogs Legion. I'm playing Watch Dogs Legion. We had we had a video yesterday. We're going to have videos over the next couple days talking about Watch Dogs Legion. But one of the things I do like to do when any, I would say, any movie or game that comes out that connects to me or I have some sort of a, you know, a, like I'm in touch with, I always want to discuss if we will get the next entry into that game. Gives us a chance to talk about the company. Gives us a chance to talk about the reception of the game, what the sales could be and go from there. I've done this before for Crash. I've done this before for uh, quite a few games. I know sometimes I get a lot of hate for that just because of, I don't know, the style of doing it so early, but Watch Dogs is interesting, and honestly, it's kind of come up in the past too because there's there are people, and I, I do not blame these people at all. I think there's people that think that Watch Dogs isn't that big of a deal, okay? Uh, and it's simply because Watch Dogs 1 became a massive deal. That, that game was enormous in terms of like the lead-up. Remember, that game was promised to be something it could never, ever hold a candle to, right? Going into the PS4, going into the Xbox One, that was the game that they said, like, this is it. This is the next gen game. This is what's going to like make it unbelievable. We're able to do these things that we can never do before. And the game came out, and in my opinion, flat out was just the biggest, maybe one of, one of for sure, the biggest gaming disappointments of my life. I didn't hate the game. I still don't hate the game. But for what it was marketed as to what it ended up becoming was not even remotely close. Another really good example of you know when they show games at press conferences and stuff like that, and then they downgrade them for the release. You, know, you can always see those videos on YouTube. Watch Dogs, the original, is one of the best examples of the, of them doing that. The difference between when they showed it at that Ubisoft E3, that that amazing, amazing presentation, to when the game came out, it wasn't even close. But the game sold insane. Watch Dogs 2. Go to the history books for Watch Dogs 2. Game I would say is a much better game than the original Watch Dogs, although focused on slightly different things, and I feel like a lot of people kind of jumped off after Watch Dogs, which I do not blame them. Funny story with me is I believe I pre-ordered, because I do tend to pre-order games, I pre-ordered this game, I think like the day before it came out. I was for the longest time set my I set my ways where it's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting this game. And then finally, day before the game came out, I was like, fine, I'll do it. And I actually really enjoyed it. But the thing you have to remember, and this goes to, you know, will we get a fourth Watch Dogs? Watch Dogs 2 did very good. It did good critically. It did good uh, in terms, you know, I think people are always going to have their issues, but I think overall in the general mindset, it did very, very solid, and the game sold very well. Watch Dogs 1 and Watch Dogs 2 are two games that's both sold over 10 million units for Ubisoft. They do have several. The Division is another example. For Honor is an example. The Assassin's Creed, certain Assassin's Creed games, they're examples of, you know, games that have sold over 10 million units for Ubisoft. Now, there's not that many 10 million unit selling games in, in general, okay? The, I mean, Ubisoft makes up a, a, a solid percentage of all. I mean, Sony's got a bunch. You know, EA, I'm sure, has a ton. Warner Bros. I mean, there are a lot of them. But when you have a, a franchise, I was going to say a studio. I mean, I guess the studio that makes this. When you have a franchise that can do this, that can make 10 million plus units every single time, and one, by the way, that doesn't even have the most, uh, like the greatest foundation, I would say. You know what I mean? I mean, I've, again, I'm a, I'm a fan of Watch Dogs. I've been a fan of Watch Dogs for a long time. I've talked up Legion quite a bit. I don't know more than any, but I don't know if that would be a fair thing to say. But I've definitely been very high on Legion. I've, I've, I've very much been very outspoken on Watch Dogs Legion on this channel for, honestly, years, for over over a full year at, at the absolute uh, minimum. Um, and so I feel like this game is actually a rare case of games of a game that does very, very successful, even though it's not you know, that outstanding. I think they're, again, they've made strides in different areas, but we're not talking about the greatest franchise of all time here, but it's a, it's a franchise that sell. You could argue maybe even the division is a good example of that solid, got a lot of good things going for it. Also made a lot of mistakes through both of those games, but has sold outrageously well where it's like they, they have to make a division three. You have to make more watchdogs games. And that's ultimately where we're at now. So we have watchdogs Legion. Now the issue with watchdogs Legion is a couple things. Well, number one, in order to talk about it, 
you know, sales do make a big difference. And I'm not selling. I'm not saying like if this game sells nine million instead of ten million, Ubisoft pulls the plug and says, no, no, sir, we can't do that. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that. But with that being said, game came out yesterday. We won't see sales figures uh, for a while. I'm sure when it crosses benchmarks, Ubisoft will say it. I'm sure when it crosses like a three to five million range, you'll hear it. You'll probably hear like an end of the year thing. We'll probably hear. Obviously, at the end of every like fiscal quarter, they talk about how how the franchises have done, how the individual games have done. They're pretty selective with that, but they do do it. And I think Watch Dogs Legion would show up. I really do think this game is going to do like at least 7 or $8 million. Now, the biggest issue is Assassin's Creed does come out in two weeks. I was talking about that for a while, how very close to it's, – it's not a great idea to put your two games that are kind of similar to each other very close together. So do they hurt each other? Definitely possible. But I do think in terms of sales, Watch Dogs will be fine. I think it will sell you know completely fine. I think – the sales will make it possible to make a new game. Well, what about the game itself? Do we actually need one? The review scores are lower. That kind of sucks. You would imagine that you would have liked it. You would continue to like things to go an upward trajectory rather than downward. But it's 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 uh, seemingly you know they've been all over the place. I mean, Watch Dogs. I think Watch Dogs too, in terms of like a statistical average of, of what you know critics gave the game, is higher. So when Watch Dogs one, Watch Dogs two is higher. Watch Dogs Legion. I think, as of right now, is sitting at the lowest one out of all of these games. So that is an issue, but... Again, I think sales speak more than the, the critic review scores. Um, I think that the audience will kind of speak to. Let's not forget critics do not speak for, I would argue, just about anybody, right? Uh, you, you, you absolutely have the right and the uh, really the need to speak for yourself, okay? The story itself, I mean, well, what's interesting is obviously they're, they're switching locations. They're kind of going the more Assassin's Creed route where they're like, okay, well, we don't have to have these games just set in one even country, right? I mean, obviously they've, they've jumped cities and locations in the first two but we can do it where we can go anywhere and honestly you know that's what's there's a lot of things that have kept Assassin's Creed around for a long time especially the time periods because not only can they choose locations and civilizations and stuff like that but they can also choose literally well let's go 500 years back in time let's go a thousand years let's go to I mean they can pick so many different eras of just human history that it keeps their franchise I think uh, very like new and where it's always something where you can experience right maybe the gameplay part maybe the the mechanics or whatever aren't necessarily all that realized or they're too similar to the ones in the past but that's what's kept it around Watch Dogs I think you've already started to see that with Legion where they're saying okay doesn't just have to be in America let's go to London let's let's go to a different place and still in the future or even like current time plus let's say right around current but around like where we would go in the next you know couple decades that's where that's what Watch Dogs has kind of always uh, been centered on could they go back in time could they do different time periods I guess but in reality again you could really just pick I mean there's so many different locations and you again they've done different cities in the United States you could even keep doing different cities you could do different states you could do different territories across the world I really think the potential is there and not to be cliche but like the best is yet to come those kind of like quotes I'm not saying necessarily that, but Watch Dogs has gone through so much in just three games where, if you think about it, hack, and I've said this before, hacking is not even the major thing, I would argue, in Legion. The, the major thing is recruiting characters, is being able to play as anybody. That's the major draw. Hacking is a backdrop. Hacking is something that everybody can do and is part of the core game and obviously has, you know, because of the story and because of what's going on in the world and stuff like that, like, it's obviously a big part of it, but... The characters playing as anybody, that's the big draw. Hacking was one and two. And you even saw it with two, they took it in a much, like, two realized maybe they should be a little bit more, I don't know, energetic, a little bit more colorful, a little bit more vibrant. That's what they, you know, that's maybe what they learned from Aiden and Watch Dogs 1, which, by the way, has now kind of got like a like a resurgence in how many people like Aiden. I've never liked Aiden. I will never admit to liking Aiden because I never did. Uh, but I am, what I will really quickly, I'm happy they're bringing him back. I think that's a cool fan lore kind of thing that's like a nice nod that I think will be a really cool thing to see. So while I'm not, you know, super happy, or not, not super I don't care. I don't care about Aiden. But 
you see over these three games, they've done a lot of different things. And so maybe not the best is yet to come, but I feel like Watch Dogs, even though they've had a trilogy at this point, they're still trying to like figure themselves out, which you could argue is bad. I may, maybe you can argue it's bad. Uh, I would say, eh, like it's something that you would hopefully want them to figure out. But I think the potential of where they could go and what they could still do, what they what they what they could still uh, uh, discover and accomplish with hacking and with you know, again, the playing is any one thing. I think from what you guys have maybe seen from reviews and stuff is fundamentally solid. It's just that again, the issue is they become a little too similar because you can swap out different traits you can swap out different weapons and stuff like that where they become you know it doesn't really become necessary to play as anyone and so those are things you expect you expect those things in the first game of a, a, a game that tries to do these kind of systems I guess Nemesis system isn't the greatest example because that nailed it the very first the very first time we saw it, and it's only, you know, they've only had one other time after that, but it did really well. So I think there will be a new Watch Dogs. I really do. I think that they've kind of discovered that this really works well, not two weeks away from Assassin's Creed, but it w really works well in like a every other year kind of thing with Assassin's Creed. If you could have, and I don't think this is going to always happen, and actually this time, this this last cycle, it didn't happen, but if you could get it where you have a Watch Dogs or an Assassin's Creed every single holiday season, that's good for the consumer, I think, as long as you give the studios enough time. And it's also good for your, you know, your pockets, right? Because Ubisoft is going to make a lot of money. So I think they've discovered that. I think that they know there's a lot of potential with Watch Dogs. I don't see this. And, I, and another thing, too, oftentimes when we get games like this, that it's, it is clear that there could be more. And by the way, the story kind of wrapped up in Legion, but it's just that story. They could easily, one, they could easily keep going, and two, they could easily just go to a different location. So the story, I wouldn't even worry about. The story has never, in my opinion, been anything to like, you know, been like the, the shining star of Watch Dogs. It's just, it's just never has been. I don't think it ever will be. But a thing to remember is that there will be interviews, there will be talks with them. I feel like over the next couple weeks, over the next couple months, somebody, it could even be today, it could be tomorrow, somebody will drop a hint that, like, we're not done. Now, they're going to support this game for quite a while, right, through, through the multiplayer, through the DLC, through the season pass, but I do think eventually we'll hear that, yeah, we're not done with Watch Dogs, we'll keep making them. So I think it'll happen, uh, I think that they'll say that very, very soon, but ultimately, we'll see. And so guys, let me know in the comments below, what, what do you think? Do you think it'll happen? Do you think it won't? Let me know. As always, make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel, hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up, and I'm still going to do around a Watch Dogs video every single day on this channel, so many more videos coming to you guys. I hope to see you all there.